Uh, you know, let's talk about this film, Maya. What a tough watch. It really hits on hard topics of addiction and domestic violence and how both of those roads can kind of converge into trapping desperate people in the illegal sex um, trade industry. What was it about the story that appealed to you and made you want to sign on to the project? Um, well, I really, I, re I, I try to just analyze the script first. When I read the script, I thought it was very interesting because of the message that it was putting out there, you know? Um, I do think it's a very important topic nowadays that sometimes people don't talk about it. There's more productions talking about it nowadays. But yeah, that was the main thing. And then I do have to be honest, uh, the role got me very interested. Just the, yeah, just the fact that I could play something like that. Um, it, would, it felt challenging, but in a good way. How was the, Diego, you play Diego. Uh, mm -hmm. How was the role described to you when you decided to sign on for it? And did it kind of change uh, as you were developing the film? I don't if i'm honest i don't remember getting a description of the role i remember uh patricia mentioned the project to me patricia velasquez so she mentioned the project to me and uh she sent me the script after talking to you know the the director julia and the producers and um i read it and uh, I, Diego was the one that I was like, I, 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 I like this guy. Like I, not like this guy, but it mm -hmm. feels challenging, and it made me feel something different. It made me, in a way, made me feel like that's something I don't want to be in real life. So I would want to play with that. Oh yeah, you know, I think a lot of actors they try to look for things that are a little bit different than who they are. Yeah. But that's their skills. Yeah. yeah. So as an actor, was there anything you brought to Diego that wasn't maybe initially in the script or on the page that you thought was needed in the exploration of that character? Right. I think for me, not just in Diego, but in general, I, what we were talking about, playing something different from what you do in real life. I try to be as good as I can be in real life. So I'm always drawn to playing bad, bad characters or characters that people reading on the page, they would assume that they're bad people, you know. Um, but I like to play with, do my work and then find a way to justify their actions and understand the character. That's my job, not to judge him, right? So um, I think that was my main thing that I wanted to do, just find a way to understand the character and make him more human and make him uh clearly not perfect he was already not perfect on page but coming from a place of a very deeply broken person um like there was a scene where that it was it was very challenging because there's domestic abuse happening right and um and um I grew up in a home where that's a very sensitive subject. So when it was time for me to do that scene, it was hard for me to be step in the shoes and not judge it. I think that was the most challenging one, but that's, I think that's, um, that's what I try to bring to the characters when I have the chance to play something, you know, to empathize with them, even if in real life I wouldn't. <laughs> Right, As right. The actor and the character, I would have to yeah, empathize with them. Well, um, you mentioned uh, domestic violence uh, and abuse, uh, which is heavily factors into the film. The scenes between you and Isabella, who plays Maya, were always filled with tension. It felt like it was just about to bubble over. Mm -hmm. um, what made her a great screen partner? Because your scenes together just were not easy, you know, and um, right. she seemed like a fantastic actress, and you yourself said that. You know, you're not like Diego, obviously. So no. what made her great to work with and develop these characters together? I think it's always about the relationship you build outside of, um, out of camera, you know? Mm -hmm. When uh, we met, obviously we met on set, we met the day that we started working together, but it's about the relationship that you start building up together. And I also feel like 
yes, there is tension and there is, we're playing the parts, right? But at the same time, I felt so comfortable after talking to her because uh, she's not really the age that she's playing, which made me feel so much better, you know, <laughs> that was already, it's already, it's still a little freaky when you're, they say action and then you're playing this person who's kind of the predator and, uh -huh. um, and it's a, uh, it's a little girl, but then talking to her outside of that and just making sure what are you comfortable with? What are your boundaries? What are you, um, making sure that we would feel comfortable with each other. That was one of the main things. And I think, uh, it was also the fact that it was her first, um, I believe it was her first big, uh, like a main a lead role, role yeah. movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, I think, I mean, you always remember your first day on a big set and then you feel like, um, you remember who was nice to you. You remember mm -hmm. who made you feel comfortable, who made you feel more at ease and like, this is a safe space. And I, I think that's also what I wanted to make sure me and Patricia, we I had the scenes with the three of them mostly. Uh -huh. So we wanted uh, Patricia and I wanted to just make him feel, make her feel that comfortable. I think it brings out probably a, a more authentic performance. I'm thinking when I was talking about tension in the scenes, I'm thinking about the bedroom scene between mm -hmm. Diego and Maya. It was tough to watch. I'm sure it was tough to to act. What was the most challenging aspect of filming that? Because you two were really tussling, and I'm sure that there was a lot of, you know, stage direction to make sure nobody was getting injured, but I I'm sure that the tensions were high, the excitement was high. Well, what was it like filming that? It was fun, honestly. <laughs> I can't tell you that it was hard or a hustle, or it, it may seem like that on screen but we just have fun like at that point her and I, I can't remember what day that was what number but uh i think by then we were comfortable with each other and we would we would ask each other like are you okay did i hit you are you fine like uh -huh. you know and it's same with her it was it was very 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 careful about each other in between takes which is what you don't see on 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 screen oh, but yeah. it was it was it was just fun it was fun well let's talk about director uh julia burden in what ways did she help you shape the performances you or anyone else on set on screen how did she shape those performances what kind of maybe advice she's so lovely i have to say by from the moment i met her she was so sweet she was um i got to meet her at her home in l.a after uh, talking a little bit back and forth, because I was in, I think I wasn't even in LA when we started talking about the project, and uh, and then when I got to LA, we met in person in her um, house, and um, I remember we sat down, we had a long conversation about what her not just about the project, but like her what she feels like is her purpose in life, and how she wants to help a lot of people, and she wants to help kids she wants to help just make a difference in the world and that actually made a that was a big important part in the whole decision of wanting to be part of the project because she's very sweet she's very very sweet and very loving and very um empathic empathic very just very human very human and wanting to make a difference for other people um in terms of being on set she would make us do warming up exercises beforehand and she would do them with us which was fun um and then she would she would listen to us she was just listen if we wanted to if we felt something uh different from the page or if we wanted to improvise a little bit here and there then she was she was open to anything I think that's what makes awesome. a good director listening yeah. as well as sight, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, this is a lot of tough, a lot of tough topics in this film, not just addiction and abuse. And then the sex trafficking It's like a combination of some, some of the worst horrors that people can go through at the end of the day, were you able to leave Diego on set or was that negative energy, something that hung with you after you left? No, I was fine. Um, 
So I have been working with my acting coach, Ivana Trubuk, for a few years now, and she's amazing. And one of the things, uh, her technique is all about the objective. It's not about feelings, because the feelings come out when you go after what you want to get in the scene or in the entire script, right? So you go after an objective, the feelings are going to come out. But I think it's, it's like life, you know, if... Have you ever been like crazy in love that you want to do crazy things? Okay, so you either go and do them or you don't. And then you wonder what would have happened. But mm -hmm. if you do them and you get rejected, maybe you'll feel bad for a little bit. But then you feel good that you did it anyways, you know, that you're not going to wonder the rest of your life. So it's kind of like that with every scene that we do, that you have an objective and you go for it and you go for it with everything you got. And then normally you're gonna get your objective because you already know on the page it's different than real life. You know how it's gonna end. So you go for that and you go for your ending to earn the right to get to that place. But um, so even if, I don't know, you're playing somebody that's gonna end up getting dumped or if it's gonna end dead or something like that, the whole time you're going after it after the objective of your ending mm -hmm. and um because you give it everything your everything then at the end it doesn't matter how sad your ending is you get your objective so you you end up winning and you end up feeling satisfied that you gave it your everything so it's always that's a good feeling with this technique that's yeah. a really interesting way to kind of separate yourself from your character while also mm -hmm existing in their shoes because you're always right. thinking about the end game the the thing the place that you're getting right. to so it just doesn't make you sit in that for so long yeah no so i would like i said there were some scenes that i would feel like this is exactly what i worked my entire life to not become but at the same time i would feel good because i challenged myself to get there and i did it and i would feel good about myself as an actor and then i would feel good about it you know like, I, that I that comes through uh, in, on the screen, even though, like you said, obviously different than who you are, but there was some definite passion in those scenes, and I felt mm -hmm. like they came from um, an authentic place. Uh, talk a little bit about the nonprofit Artists for Change that pulled this project together and what their goals are for the film. Right. Um, that was another thing that got me, you know, that got me interested when I talked to um, Julia, that she's been doing this for a while now. She's had a, a few projects under her belt that have a message, a big message. And I think she really cares a lot about youth and about guiding and um, informing younger people of problems and like real dangers out there. Um, so this is also gonna be, I know that this is gonna play, be played in some schools and some events and some stuff like that. Cause then, um she tries to do that you know she tries to at the end of the day the audience that she's trying to target is teenagers or younger people that need to have this information so they get to be safer out there in the real world i thought that was interesting that's also one of the reasons why we don't curse in the film which was challenging for me uh <laughs> oh yeah I, I just i didn't think about that when i was watching that just yeah. went right over my head but yeah yeah, there yeah. Was, for the topic it was fairly yeah. clean <laughs> yeah it was intentional um but yeah that's uh she's been doing that for a while and i know that she's got a lot of um a lot of goals that she set up for herself and, and the entire company is that the overall message that she's hoping to to kind of get into younger people's minds about learning about the dangers of what's out there and what these kind of roads of addiction and abuse can kind of yeah. intersect yeah i know that with this film her main uh, message was sex trafficking uh domestic abuse and addiction that was the main stuff and they're all intertwined in the film. You know, they all, it's a cycle. One gets like, takes you to the other and the other and the other. It's, it's a, it's pretty real. It's a real, it's a real thing. It's a reality that most of us 
have the luxury to not have to think about it on a daily basis. Yeah, that's true. You know, we also have to talk a little bit about your big break into television when you were in your portrayal of Victor Hugo in Ryan Murphy's uh, Netflix miniseries, Halston. Thinking back on that project, was there something that you personally took from working on that series? Something maybe <laughs> that you took with you about being a part of this lavish huge uh project that you were was new to you because it was uh maybe your first big break on american was, television yeah it was my big break in television not just american television just mm -hmm. in general that was my first time on a tv set uh i think like i said when um uh, working there i i really it, it made a difference for me to see how people you remember the people that were nice to you. I remember that it was, especially because we were also shooting during the pandemic. Part of it, we started before the pandemic, then there was a pandemic. Then we resumed while we had to wait for like seven months and then resume while um, the most projects were still not working. And we were trying to navigate through the whole virus and all that. Um, it was, there was a lot of uncertainty. So we, but we felt safe. It felt like we were a family, the, the main cast and then the people behind production, the director, you know, it was, it felt like we were a family. We, I mean, literally we couldn't hang out with other people even outside of work, we, we were right. not allowed. So I think one of the main things that I took with me was that like the, the main, because then people could actually see that when they watch the show, one of the main things that they would say is that the chemistry that we have between us and oh. um, just that we, that we're making comments about the, the full cast, you know, like positive comments. So that made me feel like it does make a difference when you build these relationships outside of um, when the cameras are off. It made a big difference when, uh, for example, Ewan McGregor, who is a, a, a big, you know, a big actor, a big star already. He was so nice. He was such a nice person, so humble. So, um, like, I, I looked up to him during the show while we were filming because of the way he works. But also, mostly, I looked up to him as a human being more than an actor. So, I took that with me. I took the, the fact that some people are really nice to you and you would assume they don't have to be mm. and that makes a difference and like i said like i i like working with um isabella i wanted to make sure that she also felt safe because i remember how nervous i was my first day on set you know um other than that it's just the professionalism in in the entire the entire project it was it was like you said it was a big project and everybody was so professional in front and behind camera. And it just felt like all of the pieces, like it felt like we were all one piece of a puzzle and we all fit together because we were all getting there and working outside of set. So then, well, when we would be on set, we would know exactly what we're doing and not be interrupting anything else like i'm here to do my job you're doing your job you're doing your job and it's all coming along together and it was it was just great it was, it was a really great experience i feel like if you have to have a first experience breaking into television i would not change it having that one is great I because would... look what you said it yourself you you felt welcome and uh respected on set and then comfortable yes. with your fellow cast and you brought it to isabella when you were on maya you know you can't really ask yeah. for an entrance into the into the business, I think, because um, it will probably follow you and how you um, behave on set with your fellow cast members and for future I projects. So. Yeah, I hope so too. I hope so too. So uh, let's talk about what's next for you, Gian Franco. Are, are you working on any other projects we can keep our eyes out for? Things you can uh, talk about, things you might not yeah. be able to talk about? Right. I am, um, I am actually uh, in New York right now because I am working on something that we're going to be shooting next month um <laughs> and i can talk much about it but it's uh what i'm excited about is that i'll be able to show that i can dance 
So I'm excited that I can show sides of me that I haven't yet. That's the part that I'm mostly excited about. That is exciting. Are you a trained dancer? I've taken uh, classes for years, yeah, but oh, uh, wow. mostly hip hop. So that's that's uh, that's a little different than what I've been doing so far. Oh wow! Well, I'm looking forward to seeing that, and I'm yeah. sure the fans are too. Speaking of the fans, what would you like to say to the new ones that are popping up on your social media since Halston? They're going to come after Maya, especially after the schools start watching that film. You're probably going to get a few a few extra people following you. What would you like to say to them? What would I like to say to them? I think the one thing that I've always tried to put out there, especially with kids or younger people, is work hard for whatever it is that you want to be doing you know it, it, there's many things that we can, you can like anything you can like any field but nothing is going to come so easy just work hard and work hard and if it's really your passion if it's really something that you love and that you don't see yourself doing anything else then stick to it because eventually it pays off um and just, I don't know what I would say to, other than that, like, how would I tell people new followers <laughs> and stuff like that? Huh? That's a, that, you put me on the spot there. Um, <laughs> give me feedback. That's what I would say. Give me feedback because I, I, nobody's perfect. And sometimes we think we're doing um, the right things. And I always, I think I try to put out a, an image of something that I would, that I wish I saw in somebody else or um, without an image of something that would be a good example. But sometimes, you know, like we all have different perceptions. Maybe sometimes I'm doing things and it doesn't look the best way. So if, yeah, give me feedback. If you well, ever see that I'm doing something I could be doing better, yeah. I'm sure when you say give that, give feedback, Fans love to give feedback on social media, so I'm sure they'll have plenty for you. You know, Gian Frank, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. Uh, you work hard, and I think the payoffs are coming your way. I really do. 